where the controversy is are the recent trials that were published in New England Journal, which included uh, GOG 218 and ICON 7, both of which uh, use both concurrent treatment with bevacizumab and in a maintenance period anywhere between 12 and 15 months. Both trials showed a statistically significant prolongation of progression-free survival with no impact on overall survival. The PFS improvement in GUG218 was about four months. In ICON7, which is the European trial, the improvement was about two months. The FDA has made it very clear that they will not approve drugs for ovarian cancer based upon PFS alone. Uh, and they, they are essentially demanding a, ch a difference in overall survival. Projecting out on those trials over the next year or two, it is unlikely that they'll ever show an overall survival difference. Now part of that, I think, is not the drug's fault. Uh, for instance, for GOG218, the crossover rate was probably 30 to 50 percent, it may even be higher, meaning that those patients who got placebo did not see bevacizumab. Once they progressed, they were unblinded and they got bevacizumab later. That confounds the overall survival endpoint and unfortunately uh, may neutralize any effect of bevacizumab on overall survival for GOG218. ICON7 is a little bit simpler in the sense that it was a simpler trial and in Europe they have difficulty getting bevacizumab outside of trial and so there's less crossover. There is a possibility in that trial within about a year and a half that there may be an overall survival difference, but we'll have to wait and see.